Hi everyone, Dr. Susan Brown here, Alkaline for Life, Center for Better Bones. You know, we, we have been receiving a lot of questions, people talking about vitamin D and vitamin K, asking what's the ratio of vitamin D to vitamin K. And this is, so my question to you, the question I'm going to discuss, is there really such a thing as a vitamin D to vitamin K ratio? Now this is a complicated issue, and actually when we scratch the surface of any topic, we find it's kind of complicated, but I'm going to try to explain some simple principles so you all don't worry. So you know you're getting enough vitamin D and you know you're getting enough vitamin K. So in simple terms, vitamin D is of course, the, the vitamin D and vitamin K, let's start here, have several things in common. One, during our evolutionary times, our what I'm calling now our heritage environment, our heritage diet, was we had plenty of vitamin D and we had plenty of vitamin K. We had vitamin D because we got it from sunlight and the body regulated how much we needed. We had vitamin K because we ate rotten food. We ate fermented food. Before refrigerators, we ate a lot of food that was had a lot of bacteria, and you're going to see the most potent forms of vitamin K are produced by bacteria, that's K2, but also we ate tons of green leafy vegetables, and anything we could get our hands on, that has a lot of vitamin K. So our genetic machinery is very set up for plenty of vitamin D and plenty of vitamin K. That's really one thing they have in common. The second thing is they're both fat soluble. So that's really important. You take them with a fatty meal, you're a little more helpful. You're, they're a little more helpful. They're absorbed a little bit better. The third thing is both of them play many, many roles in the body. Vitamin D plays a ton of roles because it is actually a pre-hormone. The body turns vitamin D into a hormone that affects every tissue in the body. And in fact, it now appears that 25%, 25% of all our genes have vitamin D receptors. So 25% of the genes are influenced by vitamin D. That's a really big impact. And it affects heart health, immunity, muscle health. Every part of the body is affected by vitamin D. Vitamin K also is, is very important for many, many different actions. We think of blood clotting, but now the new research is showing that vitamin K in higher doses, very effective for bone. And I'm going to show you how vitamin K, a particularly MK7, keeps, bone, keeps calcium in the bone and it prevents calcium from collecting in the arteries by some unique properties of vitamin K. So, so both of them are really important. We evolved having plenty of them. And the end of this story, in case you want to leave before this long-winded video ends, the end of it is that you want to have enough vitamin D. We like anything like between 45 and 65, but certainly 80 is fine. But say you're going to do between 45 and 85. If you say, I had my score and it was 35, you might wonder, how, how much do I have to raise it? Just to give you a rule of thumb, uh, for every 1,000 units of vitamin D you take, so you're 35, for every 1,000 units more you take, you should go up 10 points. So if you were on 2,000 and you, and you had a 30 level, you added one more 1,000, it'll probably take you to a 40 level. Now. The neat thing about vitamin D is you can have it tested. You see what your level is, but if you say, I have to raise it, you can try. You can try a thousand units and see if it doesn't raise at 10 points. Vitamin K, of course, you want to eat plenty of green leafy vegetables and have your fermented foods if you can, your yogurt, your kimchi, your sauerkrauts and all that. But essentially, to get a real therapeutic amount of vitamin K and the therapeutic dose that they're discussing in these researchers in the Netherlands, these researchers whom I know, who've worked on this for decades, they're saying 180 to 200 micrograms of MK7. So at the bottom of this whole story, the ratio is enough vitamin D for your particular blood to get to a 45 to say 65 level, and at least 180, 200 micrograms of MK7. Now I'm gonna show you that even smaller amounts of MK7 were helpful and perhaps larger amounts of MK4, another type of vitamin K2, but MK4 is very expensive. There's no need to use it. MK7 is a food, a natural food factor, and it has, you can use much, much smaller doses. So, could there be a ratio? It would, it would vary according to what the person needed for vitamin D. The vitamin K as MK7 is pretty stable. 
there's a lot of discussion, and we've done before, about how much vitamin D helps heart health and how much vitamin K. One of the most outstanding statistics, so I'm going to read you about, about vitamin K, because perhaps you haven't heard all of this, but it really is, they found that people eating foods with vitamin K, even a small amount of MK7, even 32 micrograms that you got for some true hard cheese. Now, these are European studies where they still make really old-fashioned cheese. That cheese is fermented for several years. The bacteria work on it, and they produce relatively high amounts of MK7. But even 32 micrograms was enough to reduce the risk of arterial calcification and the risk of death from cardiovascular disease by 50%. Now, these were diet studies. And they also showed that for every 10 micrograms of MK7 ingested, there's a reduction of, in a coronary heart disease risk of about 9%. So in other words, people who eat foods high in vitamin K2, high that is in MK7, really see significant benefits from their heart. And in fact, this all began looking at Japan where people ate natto, fermented soy, and those people had much less heart disease and much less osteoporosis. And the amount of MK7 we recommend and the Europeans recommend 180 to 200 micrograms is just what the Japanese people who ate natto would get in their diets. So it's really a very nice thing. There's an excellent overview on MK7. I'm going to give you an article, a really interesting article that was written, reviewed some of the recent data. And there's a terrific website called vitamink2.org, which has all the information on vitamin K2. Now, I think part of this ratio issue comes, the, the, the question of ratio comes up for, for a few different reasons. One, it's true that when you take more vitamin D, like people are doing these days, they absorb more calcium. Vitamin D is essential for absorbing calcium. As, as early as 10 years ago, they said people were not getting enough vitamin D to absorb calcium. They could swim in calcium, but it wouldn't help them because they didn't have vitamin D. Now we know people are getting vitamin D. And there are also, many people are also taking a lot of calcium, so you get more calcium absorption. And this might be part of the ratio because as you get more calcium absorption, you want to make sure that you have that balanced with other key nutrients. And one of those key nutrients is vitamin K. Remember, I said vitamin K as MK7 is the one known factor that prevents arterial calcification or one of the major factors. And so you need that vitamin K to prevent that calcium, which you might have a higher level from because you've got lots of vitamin D and so many foods are fortified with calcium now that people are getting much higher calcium than they did 10 years ago. So the MK7 is that safety valve to make sure, even if you're taking too much calcium, that you prevent arterial calcification. And even without too much calcium, people get arterial calcification. At another time, I'd be happy to discuss the studies that talk about calcium supplementation, calcium in foods, and arterial calcification. But if you look at those studies carefully, it's people on very high dose calcium. The old days when the doctor would say, take 1,500 or 2,000 milligrams of calcium and take vitamin D. So they got super calcium absorption. The doctor never said take MK7 with it because the doctor didn't know. And the doctor didn't say take magnesium. The two things that prevent this calcification that we know mostly of, vitamin K is MK7 and magnesium. And doesn't this bring us to the point that all the nutrients work together in the body? And if you ask me about ratios, ratios are important. We want to go back to what we evolved on. We evolved on, you take indigenous people living out in the savannah now, they'll have about near a 50 level of vitamin D. And the MK7, you want about 180 micrograms. Or you eat a lot of fermented food, which is really a great idea. If you can tolerate not, though, it's really terrific. So the, the ratio is important in that sense, that you must have them together. There are some researchers that are suggesting, uh, in fact, one of the articles, this, this, this article I'm going to show you, it's the synergy between uh, vitamin D and vitamin K for bone and heart health. These people have noticed that you only need a small amount of vitamin K to activate osteocalcin. Now, one thing I didn't tell you about bone health, 
about vitamin D and bone health is that vitamin D helps you produce osteocalcin. This is a protein in bone that helps to make new bone. So vitamin D contributes to that. But that, that osteocalcin is no, really has to be activated by vitamin K. And so you need to have a balance between this. You have to have vitamin K to activate that osteocalcin. Now these researchers, they have a novel theory. They say, gosh, if we're taking so much vitamin D and we have more osteocalcin, we need more vitamin K to activate it. And that's their theory. That's maybe where this ratio idea comes from. Certainly we know 180 micrograms or 200 micrograms of MK7 is a really fine therapeutic amount. But it could be that we want to think about in this term of in terms of ratio it makes a little bit of sense that the osteocalcin will be produced more as you have more vitamin d but that osteocalcin needs to be activated by vitamin k but you cannot activate it too much and in fact the body has a very good use for unactivated we call uncarboxylated osteocalcin so the body is working to to activate as much as it needs in other words, I think we're overthinking this. We're not scientists. We're just saying practically we can see from clinical work and work in the, with our clients and other research around the world, you want to have enough activated osteocalcin, but you don't, you, you don't, you don't want all your osteocalcin activated. The byline is, again, where we started. Vitamin D, like we evolved, maybe 45 to 65, you can do 40, 50, whatever you want. NGML blood level of vitamin D and enough fermented bacteria produced vitamin K2 and from uh, like most people get it from supplements like MK7. You can also eat fermented food on our websites Alkaline for Life and BetterBones.com. We've given you some lists. Some of our blogs have the list of foods that have vitamin K2. K1 is good. It's not nearly as important, but that comes from all your green leafy vegetables. So I, I suggest we cast a broad net and look at how we evolved. It was quite simple. We ate a lot of things and we, and we didn't worry about ratios and you don't really need to worry about ratios. Just make sure your vitamin D is in that therapeutic range of even 40 to 65 and make sure that you're, you have adequate vitamin K. Eat all the green leafy vegetables you can and get some fermented. Get, get some MK7 because no one's going to eat enough natto. Um, Americans aren't going to and you'll get very little from sauerkraut and other foods so I hope you don't worry about any ratio if you have if you say look I found this great new piece talking about ratios uh, you show it to me the scientists are busy looking into every little detail we like practical nutrition um, look up uh, look up the vitamin k2.org a nice nonprofit group lots of information on vitamin k2 a fantastic nutrient Pay attention. Also, I would say in closing, in that ratio, we should add magnesium. Magnesium is what helps keep calcium also in the bone, in the artery, and keeps us protected from a calcium, magnesium, calcium, vitamin D imbalance. Okay, send us your questions, and if you find any new heartbreaking research, I'd love to look at it.